Make that two wows and an old baby baby. <laughs> oh, I love this. Mm. I love being here with you. Mm. Not worrying about work. Mm. Mm, yeah. I'm not worrying about the problems at your puppet show. Mm -hmm. What? My show has problems? I'm sorry that I brought this you up. Know, should... You know, you always do this. We're, we're in the middle of making love, and then you just start talking about business. I do that? Yeah, you do. You ruin the moment. Oh, I'm sorry. I... <laughs> I just get obsessed with work sometimes. And I shouldn't be talking about um, growth patterns and market penetration. <laughs> and um, regional areas. OK, maybe I got one more moment left in it. <laughs> You're so beautiful oh, and sexy. Mm. Mm. OK, what problems? <laughs> a lot of research on your show and Andy and Denise here have some suggestions to heighten our viewership. <laughs> We've talked to some sample audiences. And you're and coming off a little shallow, hostile, uncommitted and lethargic. So what you're saying is I'm mean and lazy. And they hated your tie. <laughs> David, we're just doing some fine tuning. Look, what's probably coming across here is that I might not be that comfortable as a puppeteer. I mean, I, I, I was born to be a newsman. Rudy, if ever a guy was born to stick his hand up a puppet's butt, it's you. <laughs> Many are called, few are chosen. And can you possibly be funnier? Y you're not coming across as being funny. Yeah. <laughs> Wear women's clothes if you have to. <laughs> See, that's funny. <laughs> Thank you so much for your input. It's always a pleasure to be surrounded with such creative energy. So if you need me, I'm going to be down at the funny tie and dress shop on Elm Street. Not so fast, Rudy. We have yet to address our biggest problem. <laughs> there are bigger problems? The puppets have to be cuter, peppier, lively. Yes, exactly. The kind you would get with a with a happy meal. You know, you, you take them home and you share your personal thoughts with them. I think we get the idea, Daddy. Well, look at this guy. He's pathetic. He needs Prozac. So does Andy. <laughs> oh, this one is plain hideous. I mean, can you picture this guy in a lunchbox? <laughs> and her, she's... Well... You know, actually, I like her breasts. I think we get the idea, Daddy. Ah, but the most important thing is you get rid of the puppet with the arms. Excuse me? You heard me, Rudy. But the end of discussion. <laughs> I love being a boss. All right, lunch is on me. Who's up for Chinese? Andy, Denise. I hope you understand. This is just business. Oh, oh, yeah, sure, I understand. I, I'm just gonna kind of hang back here and just review the wisdom that was passed along to me. I hate you people! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Davy baby, we've got a big problem. Apparently, TV distorts our appearance. Yeah, well, it's a crying shame it had to turn out like this for all you losers. Ah, but life isn't always fair. And you're saying this because... Because everyone but me is out! You heard the boss, man. Get rid of the puppet with the arms. <laughs> Welcome to Late Night with Ahab. I don't think you understand. When George said get rid of the puppet with the arms, he meant get rid of the puppet with no arms. If memory serves me, that would be the one person here who needs help zipping up his fly. <laughs> oh, man. The human language can be very misleading. Earth sucks. So I guess you're no longer in the mood to gloat, eh, Mr. Late Night? 
bite me! Hey, at least one human expression still has meaning. Even though we're not exactly thrilled with Ahab's self-centered behavior, <laughs> we all morphed here together. He's one of us. Yeah! yeah. I belong! <laughs> we have to form some kind of plan, some kind of counterattack. We need maps, artillery, a movie about syphilis. <laughs> guys, guys, I, I think we're getting a little carried away here. Don't you understand? The puppet shows our cover until we find our way back home. Yeah, now we're in trouble because they want us to be cuter. Yeah, and this is as cute as it gets. <laughs> So, David, when they get back from eating those Chinese people, you march right in there and tell them it's no deal. Well, guys, that's not how you change things on Earth. You know, you have to kind of, you know, manipulate and, and, and influence. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, you're gutless and spineless. <laughs> See? The human language isn't that misleading. <laughs> what do you think? They seem to have more power when they collide. <laughs> I need a woman. <laughs> so, are you gonna sit there and sulk for the rest of your life? Which, by the way, is roughly four million years. Four million! You're gonna have one sore ass, my friend. <laughs> I was shunned by humanity, for God's sakes. Ahab, don't feel bad. Even before this whole thing started, nobody really liked you. <laughs> I was living in a fool's paradise. <laughs> Even if you're not in the show, you can still do odd jobs for us. Yeah, you could be uh, our gopher. You could wash our clothes, get us our coffee. Lick our backs. <laughs> oh, sure, like it's never occurred to you. <laughs> you know, I can do anything an armed person can do, except maybe flip you guys off. Hey, Hab, I feel your pain. Sit on my face. No, no, no. Sit, on sit, on sit on my face. Sit on my face. Sit on my face. Sit on my face. Look, David said he'd take care of this. Well, just to be on the safe side, I think we should ask for help from our Heavenly Father. Mm. Daddy! 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 George? Can't talk now, Rudy. I'm getting weaved. <laughs> Women can get a tummy tuck. I can certainly touch up a few strands of hair. Why am I seeking validation from you? Get out! Oh, oh, yeah, okay. I just wanted to talk to you for a second about that Ahab. I thing. said later. Okay, fine. So, uh, tell me, once you got them all wrapped up like that, you just stick them on top of the TV? Or... <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> you know, words out, the Channel 12 is looking for a new anchor person. Yeah, they're holding auditions all week. Excuse me, I couldn't help overhearing something about an anchor job? David, David, that would be perfect for you. Yeah, I'm sure they're in dire need of a lethargic newsman hyphenate puppet master. <laughs> and now for the news. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's, it's great having friends like you. Let's all dress alike tomorrow. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an anchor job to look into. <laughs> to the new anchor. And as anchor, you'll be making more money. So you can buy me another beer. Well, I don't have the job yet, Nick. They like me and they want to see me again, but... I still get the beer, right? Right, right. Two more, please. Even if I do get the job, maybe I shouldn't take it. I mean, there are people at the station who depend on me. Really? Who are they? They're just a bunch of guys. They, uh, they don't get out much. Do you like them better than me? I'm starting to. Hey, lesson number one. You gotta look out for yourself. I mean, how do you think I got to where I am in the world of upholstery? By looking out for yourself. That. And my uncle died and left me the business. Well, that must have been your lucky day, huh? Well, it wasn't just luck. What? I, I don't want to talk about it. My aunt will go to prison. <laughs> Anyway, do you want to be an anchor? Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I want to do. Then that's what you got to go do? I don't know, man. Maybe I won't even get it. Well, you can't have that kind of attitude. I mean, you got to believe that you're better than anybody else. That's what I do. Like, right now, I'm sitting here thinking, I'm better than you. I thought we were just having a nice conversation, but you've got all these layers of weirdness. That's because I'm also deeper than you. <laughs> This is David Rudy with the Evening News. In our top story tonight, 
Two mountain climbers lost their lives in an unexpected avalanche in the high Sierras. And I'm smiling. <laughs> Why am I smiling? Hello, David. Hey, Angela, what are you doing up so late? This Ahab mess has us all on edge. We were wondering if you fixed things yet. Uh, oh, well, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm right on top of it. In, in fact, I was just sitting here right now thinking about him. It sounded like you were practicing for an audition. Oh, no, no. I was thinking of Ahab the whole time. Dead mountain climbers were the furthest thing from my mind. <laughs> you, know, you know how I want us all to be together? David? Oh, Sherry, hi. I was just, uh, just trying out a couple of things with Angela. All right. But if I ever catch you with that bitch Barbie, I'll scratch your eyes out. <laughs> so I heard you had a call back on the anchor job. Anchor job? What, uh, what job is that? Oh, David, come on. I know everything in this town. Yes, I did have an audition for an anchor job, but I was going to tell everybody about it. And I heard it went well. Yeah, yeah, it's between me, a guy in a wheelchair, and a recently outed gymnast. Hey, I know you want to be an anchor. Well, it's kind of my dream. Yeah, and everybody has dreams, but, you know, a dream is just a wish waiting to happen. What does that mean? It means if you try to leave, we'll sue your butt off. Sherry, you wouldn't. No, of course I wouldn't. I don't think I would. Sherry. I, I just want you to stay. And I mean, I think if you put your heart into this, you could be so good at it. You know, you make those silly little puppets come to life. <laughs> you have got the most magnificent hands. Uh, Sherry, if you're trying to manipulate me, huh? it's kind of work. <laughs> <laughs> show you something really special that I got for you? Absolutely. Oh, well. Very unusual. How do we use this as a couple? Oh, this is Ozzy Octopus. He is the perfect puppet to replace the one without the arms. Jerry, look, I don't know how long I'm going to be staying here, all right? But it's going to be with Ahab. David, Ahab's gone. What do you mean, gone? Oh, we gave him away. What? Where is he? Sitting in a sales bin in some thrift shop. 